Hey yo, this is Dilio coming to you with another video. And in this video, we're going to go over FL Studio. This video is for those who may have never used it before or have are transitioning from another platform and they want to learn the basic layout of how this works. So this video is for you. It's a 2020 video. I know there's a ton of content out there, but I'd like to give you my perspective and my approach, uh, and you can reference how I use it live from a lot of my live streams. So let's dive right in, and let's just talk about the basic layout and some maybe some tips and tricks that you could use. So uh, turn this up in your car, as you go, you know, or turn it on the TV or your phone, and let's dive right in. Okay, let's go to basic layout. Obviously, you know where to play button, record buttons, but the things you want to make sure is that you can filter what you want to record. You can have all these checked in or unchecked out. You got Automation, notes, audio, clips. We're going to talk about the quantize too. We're going to talk about the recording and everything like that. Now, the important thing is that if you record an automation, if you click the check mark there, uh, it will record the the sliders and MIDI control numbers that you record in from your MIDI controller and stuff like that. So you can set that to pan, to a channel, or a filter on a synthesizer, things like that. Notes basically takes the MIDI data from the keys you press or the pads you press that generate MIDI for FS Studio. You got audio, so you can record audio, but you got to make sure you record and set arm and audio track. We're going to go into that in a later video. Clips, same thing. So... Those are some basic things and also quantize, which you want to make sure you pay attention to if you want to quantize as the recording is that you can quantize the note time, you can quantize the note end time, you can leave the note duration, and you can also do step recording as well. Where, and what that means is, is that you can step, step, step. So those are the record things right there. Of course, with this thing, you got count, you got a metronome there. You can turn on and off, which is right there. You can um, do a countdown before we're recording. I like that. Loop recording is pretty good, but there's a trick to this. So if I had a loop that just had this MIDI, I'll, I'll call it notes or clicks highlighted, it's going to loop automatically. What I typically like to do is I'll take that off and I'll record as long as loop I want and then stop it. And then as long as I keep it within a certain amount of time or notes, uh, it will loop perfectly back. And then I just kind of turn that back on to make sure that when I record something else, it doesn't keep recording in time. Another thing to pay attention to is that FL Studio records in patterns and songs. So a pattern is basically like this. It's like a small piece of the pattern. And then when you go to the playlist mode, uh, then it goes to where you can turn it into full length songs. So if I click on on this playlist right here, this gives you that more of that DAW view where you got different tracks. You can slide clips around back and forth like that. So that's something to pretty much keep in mind as you as you look forward into this as you start to create your music on here. Uh, over here to the right, you got different windows where you can look at different things. You got a piano roll, which I think is one of the best piano rolls in the game because it's very easy to take notes, click them in, slide them around. And also, one thing that you might want to pay attention to is that the quantization, I know I'm going to probably repeat quantization a lot, and if you need to know what quantiz quantization is, let me know in the comments below. Quantization right here is not the same as quantization here. This is like the global quantize mode right here. You got steps and things like that. We can break that down later on in another video. Same thing with here with notes. You click that, and this quantize value is different from this quantize. So just know that they operate separately. Uh, this one affects how it records going in where you're recording into patterns or songs and then we want to record in here same thing you know it's a little bit of difference so if i change the steps to here i can paint each step like that but if i change a step value notice that we got a lot more going on right there and this is kind of like where you can get into uh similar things like how note repeat provides you from the npc and its platform you can do things like that Okay, obviously you can control A to highlight all of that, hit delete, clean it right out. The red area here will give you the place where it wants to record. This is like a loop punch mode right there. Okay, so you got different things here. You got the piano roll. Over here to the left is your browser. I love this browser. I can browse my samples pretty quickly, pretty easily. And... Uh, I got to get rid of some of my old folders, but as you can see, it just works on a folder. You can you can dive in. I got some shout out to BWB. Got some sounds in there. You can also add different plugins there if you want, and uh, you know a lot of the proprietary plugins there. 
Also, we got the mixer. This is very important. This is where a lot of people may get lost. And this could be where you could really make your mix sound nice. Now, each channel has an EQ on it. And you can tweak that EQ and you have inserts that you can do. You could also do side chaining with these channels. You can route them from one to another. We're not going to get into that because this is basically a basic layout video. And so if I were to open up, say, a bunch of channels, if I were to right click here on the sampler and I clone it and I clone it and I clone it. The correlation between this pattern grid and this mixer is very easy. And I'll explain. The number here represents that it's being sent to number one here on the insert on the mixer channel. So as you can see, these four items right here are being routed to channel one. Okay, so let's say, hey, I want to put everything on separate mixes. Well, you can. So if I highlight all these by double clicking that, and then I go to channel one and I hit control, then I press shift and I'm holding still control stills. So I'm pressing control, holding shift and hitting L. Boom. As you can see, what happened is, is that channels one, two, and three, and four are now going to separate elements. This enables you to mix. So when I work with FL Studio, I will mix right here. And I'll pan right here. And there's some options to where you can actually go inside. And you can pan steps this way. With this graph editor. Okay. You can also do volume here. You can change your volume here by clicking in that fader. And you can also pan left and right there as well. You also have a mutant solo here. Which is separate from this mutant solo. So you have more than one mutant solos. But... This one, if you mute this one first, this one won't get it. If you leave that open and you mute here, it's gone. Another little trick that you might want to know about is that right clicking here, the solo will let you solo tracks. And then you can also lock that. So if I want to hit solo, this lock channel will not be affected by your soloing. The same thing can be applied here. And you know, as you get to know FS Studio, right click and see what other options you have. There are a lot of options here. Let's see here. If I right click there, I automatically get a solo. So that's the mixer right there. You have slots. You can open up all your plugins from these slots. We'll talk about that in another video how to add plugins. But you got a lot of effects of reverbs that you can add in there. And you can layer them together to create more effects and com combine them, which is a really cool thing that I like to do. And you can really create a lot of good stuff with that. So that's the mixer. You got projects, you got a plugin picker. I really don't really mess with the tempos and stuff like that. Touch controller. Uh, as you can see, if I click a touch controller and I drag it in the window, you can see that we got notes that we can do. Okay. And there's some settings that you can do there. Oh, maybe you want a eight by eight. You can drag it up there and do an eight by eight if you want to. You got options. Okay. Same thing there, you got a content library. I'm sorry, library. So you got a lot of different things you can do there. So that's the basic layout of it. You got your browser, you got options here. You got tools, macros. You can create your own controls, patterns. And we're gonna dive into all this depending on your guys' response if you want me to go further and deeper into it. This is just a basic layout. So, so typically what you want to do is just create patterns. So if I had random notes in here, say I was making a drum beat, say this was a kick drum, a hi-hat, snare, cymbal, okay? When I go to playlist mode or song mode, which is determined right here, pattern and song mode, and I click that pattern, I got one pattern here that will repeat. And if I want to extend the song, I could do that, or I could hit the paintbrush and just paint it, make a full length song that way. And if I wanted to dip out right there, I can. And you can also do different things with that. But when you get to more advanced arranging in FL Studio, maybe you want to have every element here on its own pattern. But that's very easy to do. You can right click on the pattern and then click split by channel. And as you can see, each channel is split. As I And what I'm doing right here is I'm clicking up and down to drag those patterns that are separate. Now I have four patterns here. So instead of having that one, what I could do now is I can highlight all four by 
holding down shift and click I got all four highlight I click and drag all that there and then I hit control B now I'm extending that pattern to the full length and now I can mix and match what's going on in the beat so as you're working on this track you got different patterns right there you can bring it in chop it up and it also so for instance say I was like so let's do it from scratch let's start with new and also one thing that you might want to be aware of is that you can start with an empty template which I should have said in the beginning but I didn't new from template I like to go to utility or minimal and empty I always like to do minimal I always like to do minimal I like to work from scratch though I think it's a better practice if you want to keep cranking out more tracks faster is to have a template with all your go-to sounds already loaded and ready to go so I'll just grab some drums you know I'll grab a kick okay I got a kick there and uh, I'll just grab a hat and I'm just clicking and dragging sounds in there and I'm grabbing a percussion which has a clap there and we'll just we'll just drag and you could also change the tempo here drag it down and I hit a kick drum and we got a kick drum pumping right there now what I want to do is add a hi-hat so I could just click and drag it there and get all these notes there but instead I'm going to right click and click on fill each two steps so every two one two one two is going to put a note in there for me and then on this note right here I'll hit a clap and I can click and add that in there now don't be troubled if you never clicked in notes like that before because this is the absolute beginner's tutorial as you do this more often you're going to start remembering where notes go so just because you like even when I first started using FL Studio and when I was using drum programming software before that I you know I had to learn what sounded good first so experiment don't be afraid to experiment and as you keep making music on this platform you're going to start memorizing memorizing where things go so I'll click all this and then I'll click here control shift L now they're all separate on separate mixes right there and maybe I want some FL reverb on it and then I want to dial that reverb back so this is the dry wet section right here so all the way to the left makes it completely dry all the way to the right makes it all fully affected by the plugin so that's a pattern okay I want to make a song out of that so right click split by channel and you can do it with just a separate pattern but I'm just trying to show you what you can do as you keep working with it highlight all of those click it and drag it in control B and let's say I want the kick drum to come in like that and now let's play the result and I gotta make sure you hit song mode so that it plays the playlist and not the pattern All right, so that's the basic layout of FL Studio. There are more basic things, but I think that's probably a great place to start. If you have any questions or you'd like me to go further into it, I use FL Studio a lot. I love to go into it. And I also want to try this with other platforms. And if I keep doing these, it's up to you, depending on all your feedback, all right? So thank you guys for watching this video. Coming to you with another video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more tutorials and all kinds of crazy stuff from Dilio. Represent Dilio, T2K.com. I'm out.